I really don't have anything for this intro, so behold. A picture of me trying to pull out the sword, but of course I have epically failed. That is, that is quite a picture. Everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review King Arthur Legend of the Sword. So, King Arthur Legend of the Sword is directed by Guy Ritchie. The film stars Charlie Hunnam, Jude Law, and Eric Bana. So, King Arthur Legend of the Sword is about King Arthur himself who gets robbed of his birthright, and his uncle is actually now the ruler of the kingdom. He kills his father. So, of course, when King Arthur gets older he pulls out the sword and of course he becomes worthy and now he has to accept his legacy whether Arthur wants to have that legacy to carry or not so to be honest with you guys as much as I do really like Guy Ritchie I do admire the man very much as a filmmaker I was not really looking forward to King Arthur Legend of the Sword. I wasn't really feeling the trailers. None of the trailers impressed me. Not the Comic Con one. Not all of the trailers for this film. It just looked like a very forgettable movie to me. And after seeing King Arthur Legend of the Sword. Oh. No. This movie's bad. This movie is really really bad. This actually ended up being worse than I expected and that is a shame because Guy Ritchie is such a good director. He is such a good filmmaker and I love his style but man does the ball really drop here. Now of course to start off with my positives for King Arthur Legend of the Sword I will definitely say this that Charlie Hunnam was great here as King Arthur. He is definitely the best actor in this film. Not only that, but King Arthur the character himself is just the best character. Really the only character I actually cared about. And I thought whenever there was some comedic aspects going, they mainly came from this character because of how much of a smart ass he is. Charlie Hunnam really brought a lot to the table and he was very passionate. Like Charlie Hunnam really, really wanted to take this role. I heard he was willing to do anything just to play this part. So that's dedication. I respect Charlie Hunnam for that. He is by far the best part of this film for sure. I always mispronounce this actor's name, so I really don't want to butcher it, but I'm going to put his name down here. I see this actor a lot in movies, and he's honestly pretty good here. I actually did think he actually did a pretty good job. Eric Bana, not really in this film that much. He does play Arthur's father, and I thought he was good for the small amount of time. And sometimes Jude Law was good. Sometimes. There are a few cool stylized sequences that Guy Ritchie brings when we get to the action. There's like one moment I'm gonna say in the middle that I thought was pretty cool and then there were like a couple of moments in the climax that I thought were cool. Not a lot of it was that impressive to me unfortunately but there were a few cool stylized moments where Guy Ritchie's style absolutely does work for for this film. As I said just right now, I did think that some of the comedic timing was pretty good and most of it, as I just mentioned, came from really Charlie Hunnam and the score. For the most part, I actually did think the score was actually very cool. It was fast, it was loud. Well, I didn't really like the loud part of it. It actually did fit very well for this film. Now, unfortunately, what really, really drove me nuts about about this film is how incredibly messy it is. This is a messy, rushed, chaotic movie where you can tell that Guy Ritchie got, got really, really carried away with his style. I know Guy Ritchie is in love with his style, but he really goes 
overboard. The minute this movie opened, I already had a problem with it because the opening sequence of this movie was already a gigantic gigantic CGI mess and not to mention that the opening scene was just rushed as hell after the opening scene happens how it cuts to the opening credits was actually pretty lousy like it just came out of nowhere so I thought the opening scene already was a horrible start and when the movie opened I'm like okay I really hope the rest of the movie isn't like that god-awful opening sequence and unfortunately, the movie, for the most part, ended up being just so unbearable. The editing here really is just so choppy. It's just so quick. And it's so distracting. How am I expected to enjoy most of the action sequences when the editing is just so messy? It was really hard to keep up with what was happening on screen because of how crazy this movie just has to freaking be. I mean, we get a montage. After the opening credits, you know, we get introduced to Arthur as a baby. And then we get this quick, quick montage where we see him as a kid and we just see him grow up to be, you know, adult Arthur. We couldn't even have maybe the first 15 minutes explore Arthur when he's a child. I think that would have been cool, honestly, if at least the first 15 minutes of the movie focused on Arthur as a child, and then maybe after that it could have cut to him growing up. But no, they just have to be quick. Show him as a child, okay? Show him as a child. Show him growing up, growing up. And then boom, 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 boom. He's an Arthur. I'm like... There's so much to keep up with this movie that it, my head was spinning. I literally felt like my head was spinning. It felt like there were things that were cut out of this movie because of the running time. This movie is two hours and six minutes. And this felt like a movie that maybe could have been longer than two hours and six minutes because just of how rushed it is. And it's odd to say this, but as chaotic and just you know fast this movie is it's somehow really boring to me i was actually really bored a lot of times watching king arthur because i wasn't really invested in this world the storyline is just so bad it's so rushed the writing i don't know what this writing is honestly and a lot of the dialogue is just so flat there's even a lot of wood and acting most of the acting isn't even good here but the worst performance by far is the mage played by astrid burgess frisbee oh my goodness she really overreacted to the next level with that character that was really hard to get into i can't even say the cinematography is good in this film not even the cinematography could have had me glued to this film because you know normally when i watch a bad movie i can at least comment on its cinematography some of the time being good not with king arthur legend of the stone it just has this ugly gray color palette and i know that they want to make this film to make it feel very medieval and i appreciate that that, but the way they use the color palettes in this film, just this gray, gray color, it really looks so ugly. The lighting is so poor. I can't even say the production design. Not even the production design is good. It felt like they were on an actual set. I didn't feel like I was in this medieval fantasy world. I didn't feel that way. I actually felt like these actors are on an actual set. You don't want to feel that way when you watch a movie. When you immerse yourself into a movie, you actually want to feel like you're in this world. But watching this film, I couldn't help but feel like they were on an actual set. And because of that, this really took me out of that experience. And these characters are just so 
so wooden. I mean, seriously, a piece of wood has more personality than most of these characters. That actor I mentioned earlier, as good as he was, his character wasn't really that interesting. And then Eric Bana, he's good in this film, but his character as Arthur's father was not interesting at all. Really, Arthur is the only character I feel feel has some kind of personality to him. No, not some kind of. He actually does have a lot, a lot of personality to him, but not all these other characters. So it's really hard to actually get attached to these characters. And also, my goodness, do they really force the humor down your throat? A lot of the humor really falls flat here. And Guy Ritchie's direction for this film is just so poor. I get it. You want to have us in this fantasy world, which I think is cool. I think the idea of having a King Arthur story set in the fantasy world was cool. But if Guy Ritchie just didn't get so carried away with his style, if he didn't get so carried away of having quick, fast editing and having these rushed scenes that just make the storyline feel like a complete jumbled mess, we could have had ourselves a good story, but no, because of all those things, that's what just makes this a huge waste of a movie. And then the movie wants to seem to repeat itself with this flashback dealing with Eric Bana as Arthur's father and Jude Law. It's all like we already get the point. You don't need to show us this flashback over and over again. It gets repetitive. I really hate to say this. Jude Law. Jude Law. Good God. He was so bad. This is the weakest performance from Jude Law. I never thought I would see the day when I say Jude Law gives a terrible performance, but somehow he does in King Arthur. Now, only sometimes does Jude Law give a good performance. I'm not gonna lie, sometimes he was a little bit threatening. I did buy into it, but man, for the most part, as Arthur's uncle, I thought he really overreacted in this film. I mean, there is a moment towards the end where Jude Law is screaming at the top of his lungs. Wow. Wow. And not to mention that this is visually just an ugly movie. A lot of the visuals, no, all the visuals, honestly, they're so noticeable. In the opening scene, you get these giant elephants and it is so obvious that it's CGI. You get a giant snake just popping out of nowhere. Like, okay, that giant snake came out of nowhere, first of all. I'm not gonna mention which scene, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. That came out of nowhere and then you get these giant rats and all that stuff and wow, the visuals are horrible. And what even blows my mind is the budget. The budget for this movie, I actually looked it up. It is $175 million. That's the budget for this movie. And it is horrible. And my final problem with this movie that I surprisingly forgot to mention is the tone. The tone is so confusing with this movie. At one point, it wants, it wants to be this chaotic and very loud movie, but then out of nowhere, it will shift to being very dramatic and very emotional. And the dramatic scenes, first of all, just don't work at all. So not only is it just rushed when it comes to its scenes with like past, present, all that stuff, but it just feels so confusing when you really look at the tone. I I really had a hard time of trying to figure out what this movie was trying to go for. Overall, King Arthur Legend of the Sword ended up being a major dud. This is already one of the worst movies of the year. This is the first terrible movie of the summer. I could not believe how bad this movie ended up being. My expectations were not even that high for this film. They were just okay expectations, but the fact that I ended up coming out of this movie really mad and just completely baffled 
what does that tell you? Guy Ritchie goes way too overboard with his style. The performances are so flat and you have action sequences that are over bloated and completely forgettable. I really hated this movie. This... What was this? I'm gonna give King Arthur Legend of the Sword one and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know. What did you think about King Arthur Legend of the Sword? And what is your favorite movie from Guy Ritchie? This is Twain to Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.